Hi, um, welcome to the Stash and Notions podcast. My name is Penelope and you can find me on both Ravelry and Instagram as Miss Red Pen. Today is Saturday the 3rd of September 2016 and this is episode 3, You'll Have to Speak Up, I'm Wearing a Towel. Um, just so you know, that is a Simpsons reference that's been stuck in my head for a few days and I'm not wearing a towel right now. I'm jeans, shirt, that kind of thing. <laughs> How are you? I hope you've had an absolutely fantastic couple of weeks since we last met. Things have been pretty good around here in Bacchus Marsh. Um, spring is desperately trying to do its thing. Um, the days are thankfully starting to get a bit longer. I'm not leaving for work in pitch black anymore. It's still pretty dark when I get up at 5.30 for that hellish long commute. But on the whole, summer is coming, so, you know, you can't complain about that, can you? There's been plenty of time in the schedule for knitting, and when we get down to my finished objects, yes, finished objects, and works in progress, I'll talk about that a bit more then. It is the start of study period three at Open Universities. Um, those who don't know, Open Universities is basically and anyone can access higher learning through an online portal. I'm studying a Bachelor of Internet Communications through Curtin University. And this semester or study period, I'm doing a subject that I'm not that excited about. It is one of the compulsory introductory subjects. I should have done it right back at the beginning but it's kind of got to the point where I'd really better do it before I move into the more advanced subjects. It's called Academic and Professional Communications and it is designed for people, I think, it's been designed for people who've never really studied at uni before and so, you know, there's a lot of hand-holding. It's, um, we have to do group work. I do not like group work at uni because... Because I um, study in my own special little way, um, it means that I have to kind of conform to these ways that other people like to work in. It's really difficult. And then the other thing that really got my goat, and I was so mad about this for days, um, the textbook. This is the first subject that I've done since I started this course where the textbook hasn't been available as an ebook through Amazon for Kindle the Kindle app and whatnot. Um, instead, the, the version of the book that you can get as an electronic version is leased to you for five years and that's it. And then if you want to access it after that five-year period is up, you have to go and re-rent it. So because I think I've mentioned before, with my long commute, I try and get a bit of study done on the train. Actually, I wouldn't have mentioned that before because we haven't talked about my studies previously. So in addition to knitting and using my time constructively on the train, it, it's pretty handy for studying um, when I'm not watching other knitting podcasts. And, you know, having to lug around a giant textbook is really unappealing. So this is a knitting podcast after all and not a copyright and content production podcast so I won't get into a big ramble about um, how I feel about this stuff in more detail and what I think we should do that can that can happen somewhere else and instead let's just move on to the first segment let's talk about what's on the rack before we do I'm going to just put my hair out of the way so we can see what I am talking about this um is one of my finished objects. It is Crea by Isolde Teague from her Little Red in the City pattern book. Um, I've knit this one from uh, Yarn by Indie Dye, The Good Sheep, last year, or maybe it was the year before now. She had a Kickstarter to get some yarn and dye up all. Um, batches for her backers and this was the colour that was custom dyed for me and it didn't come with a name on the colourway so I refer to it as the Penelope colour as 
she thought it would be a good match and I think it came up really well. Um, the pattern, which I already mentioned, is a really good easy simple pattern in that there is a lot of plain stockinette stitch, a little bit of shaping, um, it's top down and um, the only thing I did wrong is that I knit it all based on my bust measurement and the book that it comes from actually goes into quite a lot of detail about why you shouldn't do that and to measure it and custom fit everything so that the garments suitable body. Um, so it's ended up a little bit too big in most places but that's all right. Um, it's really comfy and it's kind of got that slouchy oversized look that a lot of garments are going for at the moment so it's not too bad. I think the only thing I need to change soon is these buttons are a little bit too small for the buttonholes so it looks like it's pulling a bit when it's actually not. I've got some similar wooden buttons that I picked up at Bendigo last year or the year before that I can just replace these with when I have a bit of time. Um, I don't think there's anything else to add to this section so let's move on to the next segment. This next segment is finished objects. Hooray! I've got a couple of items to show you. The first one being my spinning project. Now um, last time I showed you this one as a work in progress and it is now off, off the wheel, off the bobbin and I've got it ready for soaking and whacking and all of them things but I thought I would show it now as the spinning is actually finished. So. Here it is in all its glory. You can see it's still, as I said before, how it's quite thick and thin. I was a little bit disappointed by it. I have changed my mind in the two weeks since I last filmed. Um, it actually looks really nice and it's nice and squishy and lofty and I hope it keeps that property once it's been washed. Um, and I'm now, you know, I'm motivated and inspired to get back into my spinning and see what the next one um, turns into. So yeah, um, it's really strange isn't it when, when you spend all this time being really disappointed in the product because it's not perfect and then you let it sit and come back to it and realise what you've got is usable workable yarn. <laughs> spinning is kind of amazing. <laughs> The other finished object is tucked away over here. Ah, yes, not this one. This is the working project that's coming up next. Here we go. Remember how I said I had to knit those heels so that I could say my socks are finished? Ta da! All right. Um, the afterthought heels weren't quite as scary as I thought they were going to be. Um, the tricky part was going around in the pattern and picking up all the stitches to begin the heel but once that was done it was a really simple process. Um, as I mentioned last episode the stripey sock is a fab funky fibre um, yarn with 15 stripe rainbow and it's a nylon merino blend there. Um, the heels for a bit of fun and interest is um, from Kathy Fibers. I have the ball band here. This is uh, SW Merino. I don't know what the SW stands for. Merino Nylon Stellina 75, 20 and 5. Um, and it's just called Black Sparkle. Um, and the best thing, this is the first pair of socks that I've made for myself and they fit. They are a perfect fit. Maybe a little tight around the cuff but nothing that's going to stop me from wearing them. So I will hopefully get a photo soon of them on my feet being sported and taken for a test run to see how they go in the real world. So. Um, best thing about that is that it's motivating me to knit more socks. And with that, let's move on to the next segment, which is my works in progress. Hi, 
time to talk about my works in progress. I've got three projects to show you today. The first one is the one that I have talked about in the last two podcasts being the Waiting for Rain shawl. Yeah. Um, I am part way through a short row. Um, I think I put it down because it was way past bedtime on our work night. I have finished a yarn, a short row lace repeat now. And I thought it was the last one in the project. I'm going along and looking at it going, there's an awful lot of yarn left. I'm looking at the picture and I'm looking at what I'm making on my needles and they don't match up. I go back and check through and I have skipped a whole section of the pattern. Um, I decided that instead of undoing it all that I would just keep going and I think I have enough yarn um, to just have it as a little feature in the finished product. So I am going to have a much larger shawl than the pattern calls for but um, it will be something Let's call it a personal customization. Uh, that's one of the beauties of knitting. If you want to change something up, you can. The next project that I'm going to show you is one that I started quite some time ago, uh, but it's been languishing in the UFO pile. It is just another basic sock but instead of doing it like the previous one with the afterthought heel I have gone for the gusset short row I think you call it heel um, just just a very basic sock I started knitting it from the top down and just kept going because it was one that I, yeah, I started on holidays and I wanted it to be something that was completely mindless that I really didn't have to think about while I was relaxing, talking, drinking, you know, you know, all of those things that you do while you're on that K. Um, I've been knitting it on these super short, tiny, tiny little needles. Um, I think they are 23 or 25 centimetres, 9 inch chow goose and it's a different experience um it's kind of easy for when you're just going round and round and round it takes a bit of getting used to um not sure i completely love it i think i prefer using dp ends at the moment but um i'm now inspired to knit all the socks and next thing i want to do is try um, two at a time socks is just something I haven't done before though I did see on Ravelry somewhere someone who knits like eight pairs of socks at one time I I don't understand how that works but they they can do it and they, they like it whatever you floats your boat I guess now this is the yarn that I am using for this one for the socks it is um, a knit picks yarn called chroma um, I got it for free, it was part of a bonus they had last year, it was spend X amount of dollars, get the free ball of yarn, and so I went, sure, why not? Um, not sure I completely love, love this yarn, it's a single, and it's not the most robust of yarns in that it, um, if you have to tink back, it catches on itself so it felts really quickly in and on itself and breaks and becomes a big mess. So I'd, um, I'd messed up really early on the first time I cast it on and so trying to pull it back was a nightmare and broke the yarn and in the end just had to start all over again. Um, the colours are quite nice though. Um, so yes, I wouldn't really recommend it but you know, as they always say, different strokes, etc. So that's that one. Now the third one. The third one is a project I am knitting for the husband. He, he's knit worthy. Um, again, talking of my holiday last year, I went to New Zealand on a cruise. So we left Sydney and then we 
um, circumnavigated New Zealand and came back to Sydney. And while I was there, I got to do one of my favourite things and visit Hobbiton and the weather workshop where they did a lot of the special effects, props, etc. for the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films. So this project was a kit that I bought from the Weta Workshop store, which is called the Weta Caves. So what it did, it come, came with three balls of yarn in different colours and the pattern. Now this is the cool bit, it is the a replica of the prop, which is the scarf worn by Bofa. And I'll put a picture in with a copyright of Bofa just to refresh your memory. And so I'm working away on it. Um, this is about a week's worth of knitting. And it is following the pattern as instructed. So it is straight garter stitch on 10 millimeter needles and yeah, the pattern basically tells you how many rows you have to do before you change colours and then it gives you some instructions for very aggressively blocking it to have the look and feel of the scarf in the movies. Um, which is which is all cool and fun. The only thing I'm going to say is that the pattern has been written in a very unusual way and it's frustrating and I don't like it. Um, I'm assuming that they wrote it for people who it, this is like their first time knitting project or something because it yeah instead of telling you how many rows to knit it tells you how many garter bumps you need on one side of the pattern I don't think I'm giving anything away too much by that so what it means if this is your first project and you follow it and then you go and pick up a pattern written by somebody else who uses the more standard you know knit 20 rows and then change your colour, you're going to get confused and you're going to stuff things up because you're going to knit 40 rows instead of 20. So bad move there, um, Stansbro. And um, maybe next time, next movie, because I'm sure Peter Jackson is going to call you guys up again and use you when he makes another movie that, you know, in New Zealand and does all that. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about the yarn now. Um, it is a special one that they did. It's called Mithril. Mithril by Stansborough. They're pure wool. So yes, you get three balls of this in the pattern. Um, apparently, yeah, it's made in New Zealand and it's um, available in pure natural grays or biodegradable over dyed hues. It's not the not the smoothest of yarns. The um, it's a, it's a little scratchy. So um, I suppose it was a custom spin being mithril for the project. Uh, I don't know. Um, and while I've been knitting, I've had to pit it, pick out bits of straw. I know, right? <laughs> so. Um, Maybe it's meant to be, maybe the little bits of straw are meant to give you some kind of weird, authentic dwarf in the country kind of feel. Um, I don't know. Last episode, I put a question to viewers about an idea I had for a knit along. And so in this segment, I am pleased to announce that we are going to go ahead with the knit along. This is the transitions knit along or craft along. If knitting's not your jam, then it can be any other fiber craft that you love doing. We are going to kick off on Friday the 9th of September and run through the 23rd of October. And this is the transitions knit along and it is for knitting an item that will take you through from the last major season through to the next one so from winter or well spring now through to summer or from autumn through to winter we're going to kick off next friday as i said with a virtual knit night via google hangouts so what i will do is put a link in ravelry uh, and also on the blog 
um, for people who want to pop in and say hello or join us for the craft on party for a couple of hours um, I would love for you to sit and knit with me for a little while and um, introduce yourself say hello if you can't join us uh, on the hangout then please um, introduce yourself over on the Ravelry group because I would love to know a bit about you as well um, for this middle I am going to have a few prizes that I have made and put together by myself now I'm not going to reveal everything right now let's keep a bit of a surprise for the next episode but I will show you part of what it is um, it's some little notions tins that I've been working on and they are going to get fully kitted out but like I said let's not give away all the goodies right away so um, each of the tins what I have done is fit them out with a little non-slip um, silencer kind of insert on the base because um, I don't know about you but these tins when they're in your bag they kind of rattle about a bit and they've got all the stuff in them and so this is partly to help keep things in place a bit more but also to help a bit with silencing the tin and then in on the top of the lid what I have done there is put a little magnet in and so you can keep your darning needle in place because I am forever losing these things they turn up you know there's one in the ring holder that sits next to my bed at the moment as well because I was finishing off ends to those socks in bed last weekend um, so yes the rest of the materials that are going to finish off the stash of notions kit um, will be announced in the next episode so um, please comment below or over in one of the Ravelry groups what you think of the tins um, and also let me know what you're thinking of knitting if you're going to join us knitting or crafting um, yes it'll also be on Instagram so if you're not a Ravelry person um, just use the hashtag stashing notions or the along with the hashtag knit I'll transitions knit along and I'll put something on the screen or in the notes below to confirm what they are. Um, so there will be um, a prize for the people with finished objects. I'm going to have two of the tins to give away to finished objects and I'm going to have another two in the works in progress general chatter thread as well um, so I will use a random number generator and they'll just be drawn at random I was originally thinking of knitting something in cotton because cotton is great for summer but inspiration struck and I am now going to knit myself a scarf from a lace weight which is on the floor so just hang on a sec lace weight yarn um, it is misty alpaca kid baby alpaca and it is a two ply hand painted lace and it is red showing up a little bit more red here than what it is in real life so there's reds and purples in there and it is just gorgeous and it's so nice and smooth feeling um, I assume it will off of it once it's been knitted but um oh this colorway is called oscar knight and i don't know why <laughs> yeah um and the reason i'm making that is because i was flicking through this book that i've had for a while now and yeah, let's see can i show it yeah there we go needles and artifice which is a steampunk part novel part knitting pattern book and i will tell you, the novel's not that great. It's fun, but it's not great. And um, there is a scarf in here that calls for an alpaca um, lace yarn. So I thought, why not? You know, um, it saves me a lot of time trying to decide what to make when I have, you know, the mythical right yarn 
right project, bang, let's do it. And I should have tagged the page before I started, but I'm just going to flick through and try and find the picture of the particular pattern that I'm going to make. One of the really interesting things about this particular one is that the patterns are kind of linked to the chapters in which they are featured, which is cute and cool and I've never seen anything like it. If you have, let me know because I'm kind of intrigued by it all and would probably like to do something along these lines again, you know, have a book with a novel and the patterns interspersed through the pages. So um, I'll try not to show you too much of the text again for copyright, but it is the Mountain Lily Scarf. Um, so that little pinky number there that I'm going to turn into a red purple number. Um, the I think that I'll do a test swatch um, just to make sure that the variegation in my skein isn't too busy for the lace and so it won't get lost. But I think being a two ply and being quite an open lace pattern, we should be okay. But let's find, let's um, figure that out when we get to it. And I think that is probably all there is to say about that right now. If you have any questions about this, just um, hit me up in the comments or over on Ravelry. Um, happy to clarify anything that needs doing as this is the first time I have done a little long like this with that's a bit more serious than the Aussie cardigan. Okay. I think we are ready to wrap things up for another episode. Thank you again for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and that you're getting all geared up to join me for the middle long. Um, as always, please like, like this episode, subscribe to the channel, join me over on Ravelry, say hello, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.